Well, the DTA has been around for about 125 years up here in the Great Northland and actually started uh, with mules and, and trolley cars operating on Superior Street. So uh, it's had a long history uh, of transportation services. The DTA's mission, as we have printed all over the building, <laughs> is that we're a public transit service, uh, that we want to be safe, convenient, and uh, basically affordable, and, and as well as efficient in how we provide service to the Twin Ports area. The large majority of the people we serve are folks that are going to and from work uh, in the morning and the afternoon, as well as many, many people that basically uh, travel throughout the day that don't have access to a car for particular trips or don't choose not to own a car. We also have a huge amount of university students that currently ride the system. Only about 4,000 students per month rode the DTA bus back in like 1999 and 2000. Uh, this fall we had nearly 4,000 people a day riding uh, just to and from the University of Minnesota. So obviously, uh, many of the folks in transit kind of are green uh, thinkers anyway, uh, and we are always looking for ways to improve what we're doing here at the DTA. We're like any business, so that a lot of times, you know, we kind of get our heads stuck in what we're watching right in front of us, and it's nice to get in with other groups that can uh, have other ideas, and we're very good at borrowing ideas from other people, and we love to do that kind of stuff, and if we can find a way that we can save a few bucks here or a few bucks there, and it helps the environment, that's just an added bonus for us. You know, we, we all want to be safe, we want to be economical, we want to save the environment, but everything comes at a cost. Well, challenges that usually for us is always focused on trying to provide the best service we can for the monies that are available and just having enough monies. So uh, we've gone from an annual budget for fuel of less than $400,000 to this year where we'll probably spend $1.4 million on fuel. I think we are a really good model, just being that we do touch a lot of lives and maybe in some way we can form them to help us out as well as the city and the Twin Ports area. Um, my model of course is I hope we can start conserving on electricity, on paper, on fossil fuels, etc. <clears throat> Train people and teach them how they can help also. Um, in IT I'm hoping to automate a lot of things to help with the cost of paper and the paper itself. We're like any public business right now where our funding hasn't uh, always kept up with where we thought it would be. We have to make significant cutbacks. We've had employee cutbacks here just like every place else. But we need to try and maintain what we're doing on the street to the best we can. And at the same time, if we can be more energy efficient as we do it in any fashion, whether that's with our fuels or lack of uh, using papers, products, or changing what we use to clean buses, that's an asset for us as well as the community. I see a lot of waste, hopefully more recycling can happen here um, with water, with paper, with lights. So I'm hoping every little bit can help. We go through how many trees of paper a year uh, just being a public business. We've done lots more with electronics. Uh, we are looking into new technologies that are automating things so we have less time spent on a project, more accurate data so we do not have to print things three, four, six times over again. Shutting down computers, monitors, powering off bathroom lights or the lunchroom, coffee room, conference room when they're not being used. We're taking some pretty big steps. We got the hybrids going, uh, biodiesel. We use biodiesel um, in our buses. Uh, we use ultra low sulfur fuel in all of our buses. And we're pretty excited about the hybrid buses. We went into it and hybrid technology in the buses was relatively new. Kind of apprehensive too at the same time because we didn't know exactly what we were going to be getting into. We did send two of our mechanics to school um, before the buses arrived actually just to kind of get a heads up on the maintenance issues and whatever uh, you know differences that, were going to, that we were going to have between the regular diesel buses and the hybrid buses. But uh, they've been great. We've had no issues with them. Uh, the increased mileage is about 25% um, just on fuel savings alone, you know, not to mention the reduced emissions because of the smaller engine size. So uh, it's definitely made an impact. There's been zero issues, um, you know, with the hybrid side of the system.
So they've been great. Personally, I, I always try to look for the best way to do things, being in maintenance. Um, as far as uh, do we need to do this, we, we look at all the areas, especially from the maintenance background, to see how we can save, but yet how is it going to impact something else. But I hope that I'm going to get the knowledge to make it easier to identify um, you know, different obstacles, different situations. I'm just hoping that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more like second nature. I was a little apprehensive because you just never know what you're getting into. Uh, <laughs> and I think everybody was real excited about going into the project, but just a little not knowing exactly what we're doing here. So we're hoping for some guidance, which I'm sure we'll get, and to kind of help us along with the process. Just really excited to do this. I mean, we've learned a lot so far, and um, I hope we can keep moving forward.